I'm a guy that's 24. Each day I build some more. I like episode 7 and episode 8. I'm Rich Boy J. Hello boyos, Rich Boy J here back in with another video and this is gonna be another mock review. Man, I'm on a roll lately. This is Mr. Idler's AAT model and boy, do I love this thing. I actually love this so much. I built five of them over the span of a couple weeks. Started with one, added two more tan ones and then added both of the CIS color variations because I love this design so much. One thing that's certainly worth pointing out initially is he actually designed the tan one. The CIS colored one, I basically just took his design and tried to swap the colors as I saw fit, which was kind of a big deal for me. Traditionally, I've been a much bigger fan of the Trade Federation colors than the CIS colors, but I thought it looked cool and actually having it built here in front of me I think I might actually prefer those CIS colors. This is a great quote unquote cheap build for you guys to do. I know we're all on quarantine right now. So if you were looking for a very nice model to have in your collection, I ran this thing through Bricklinks Easy Buy and they're both around $50 to build. And you could obviously get that price way down if you have a decent amount of the parts to start off with. I think the AAT has to be my favorite tank design in all of Star Wars. It's just so unique looking. It really doesn't look like anything else in the Star Wars universe and it just resonated with me the first time I saw it on the screen watching Star Wars episode one. And I think that Mr. Idler has done an incredible job at recreating it. One of the most important things for me for him to nail was the general shape of it because the cockpit area just sits pretty far back offset from the main base of the vehicle. Like the tank just has a very skewed look to it. So the fact that he was able to execute that, I would say pretty flawlessly, I think is a testament to his skills as a builder. The first thing I'd like to talk about here is scale. I think this thing is very close to minifig scale. Having a battle droid standing next to it, it looks just right. I think what a lot of people kind of misunderstand about this is the AAT is not a very large tank at all. It's actually quite small compared to most Star Wars vehicles we see. So I'm actually quite happy with this size. I think if you have the original AAT, you can see I have one here, or this is at least what's left of the one I have after I poached quite a bit off of it to make the three custom ones that I built. But the scale, the size is actually pretty comparable between these two, and I'm actually very happy about that. I feel like this was the perfect AAT size for Lego initially, so this one being pretty close to that size makes me very happy. I thought the Clone Wars one that Lego released was certainly too big for an AAT. One of the reasons I like this model enough to build five of them was that I feel he just captures a lot of the curves so well with his design, specifically with this front section right here, the use of these curved slopes and the dish sitting on top and even just this standard slope right here. Like if you look at the actual AAT, this is a rather complex section to try to have come together with Lego pieces, but he does a pretty good job at it. Also just love the use of this curved slope right here. Like this was perfect for the AAT right here and everything just flows so smoothly on this model. Like there's very few gaps, but a lot of complex angles and curves, which shows that he put a lot of time into making sure that this thing came together and looked really nice. There are a few play features on this model, specifically with where you can access and place your droids in the build. So there first is this back section right here. Gotta be careful taking this off because this isn't connected to it super well. But much like the official LEGO AAT sets, there's this seat right here. Um, my, I'm gonna guess this is probably like the main cockpit where the pilot would be sitting. So you can take your battle droid, just set his feet in there, clip the hand to the bar on the front. And then slide him back into the vehicle. And boom, you have yourself a pilot in the AAT. There's also a second area where you can add a battle droid to this and it's this little pod up here. This is where the gunner would be sitting. Unfortunately, there's no way to actually sit him in this without them actually standing and their head kind of sticking out of the hatch. Like you can't just sit them down in there for good, which I kind of understand because this actual section, like the droid would be sitting somewhere like in here where that rotation plate is. And that's clearly just not possible with Lego. 
if you wanted to try to make it to where he could sit in here, you'd have to significantly increase uh, the size of this. And I could see probably why he didn't want to do that. But if you do want to just have the droid sitting up here and kind of looking out onto the battlefield, that is totally an option. And that's what that might look like. So it's cool that there is still that option. He could have just like attached the dish to that and have been done with it. But the fact that you can actually accommodate a droid in there somewhat was pretty nice. I appreciated that. I know I spent most of the review looking at the tan version, but I did want to give you guys just a 360 view of the CIS version. There were a few design changes I had to make to accommodate certain parts that didn't exist in these colors specifically with uh, these quarter dish pieces right here. Obviously on the old one, we have this printed dish, which came on the original set. That's not really an option for this one. Like there were parts that came in the second AAT and I probably should have used those at least down here for the little, I don't know if they're, I think they're like guns that are down here. Basically these right here. And I just didn't think to do that. So that piece could certainly work there, but there's there was no big dish like this one that was split between dark blue and light gray, obviously, because that's such an old piece. So I instead went with these two pieces here and kind of rounded out the sides with these curved slopes. And I think it actually worked out pretty well. I mean, if you look at them both together, they look close enough to where it's not, you know, jarring the differences between the two. Another thing I had to change were the uh, sections right here. This one from back in the day, you had this big tan engine piece, which was literally just perfect for this. That was not a part that existed in dark blue. So I had to brick build it. And I tried my best to, you know, be as faithful to Mr. Idler's design as possible. Cause you know, you don't want to you know promote something as like, this is his design, but you know, change it any anywhere significantly. But I tried my best and I think it actually came out pretty well. These um, one by two curved bricks were super useful in that respect. And I think it actually ended up being pretty nice. And that's gonna finish up the video today, guys. Like I said, the instructions are gonna be in the description of this video. If you wanna build one of these for yourself, they are free, so anyone can build it. There's no, there's literally no excuse not to add at least two, three, or four, or even five of these to your collection. But thanks for watching the video. If you like what I do, go ahead, support the video by hitting the like button, support the channel by smashing that subscribe button, and I'll be back again very soon.